Let me ask you something. Have you ever felt like your leadership skills are on point, but you could use a bit of push in understanding and managing emotions, both yours and your team's? Well, today's video is all about enhancing your emotional intelligence, specifically geared towards leaders like yourself. We'll get into what emotional intelligence means in the leadership world, why it's essential, and best of all, I will equip you with some practical strategies to sharpen your emotional intelligence toolkit. Let's get started. Emotional intelligence, often shortened as EQ, is all about understanding and managing emotions, both yours and those of the people around you. Now, why does this matter? Well, imagine this. In any workplace or even in life, you are constantly dealing with people and their emotions. Emotional intelligence helps you handle these emotions. Whether it's managing your stress, empathizing with a colleague, or diffusing a tense situation. In short, it's a key to building strong relationships, resolving conflicts, and creating a positive atmosphere wherever you go. Studies show that 90% of top performers are good at this. Unlike IQ, which measures cognitive abilities, Emotional intelligence measures how well you deal with feelings. As Travis Bradbury from Talent Smart says, leaders set the mood at work. If they are not good at managing emotions, it can bring down the whole team. For leaders, emotional intelligence is super important. It helps you connect with your team, communicate better, and handle conflicts. So, moving on, let's talk about five emotional intelligence skills you should work on if you want to be a better leader along with some tips to help you develop them. Let's start with self-awareness, arguably the cornerstone of emotional intelligence. Self-awareness is all about knowing yourself inside and out, your strengths, your weaknesses, emotions, beliefs, and what drives you. It might sound simple, but it's surprisingly rare. A whooping 79% of executives admitted to having blind spot areas where they thought they were strong by others disagree. But why does this matter for leaders? Well, those who understand themselves well are better at understanding others too. They are more in tune with their team's emotions and can motivate them effectively. On the flip side, leaders who lack self-awareness can lead to poor decision-making and struggles with conflict resolution. But here's the good news. By recognizing your weaknesses, you can build trust with your team and show them that you are human too. Plus, knowing where you need to improve is the first step towards professional growth and success. Think of self-regulation like this. The more self-aware you are, the easier it is to regulate yourself. When you can recognize what you are feeling and why, you are better equipped to respond in a way that is appropriate and constructive. Daniel Goldman, the psychologist who brought emotional intelligence into the spotlight, puts it well. Strong leaders are known for their emotional outbursts. So how can you improve your self-regulation? Here are some tactics you can try. Pause before responding. Give yourself a moment to collect your thoughts before reacting. Something as simple as taking a breath and counting to 20 can help you clear your mind. Second, take a step back. Sometimes you might need to physically remove yourself from the situation. Stepping outside for a breath of fresh air or calling a friend can give you the space you need to calm down. Recognizing your emotions. Keep track of what you're feeling and why. By identifying patterns, you can better prepare yourself to handle similar situations in the future. Empathy is like having a superpower in leadership. It means you can understand where a person is coming from and understand their feelings and experiences. But here's the thing. Even though almost everyone agrees that empathy is super important, most people feel like it doesn't get the attention it deserves. Yet, when companies make empathy a priority, they see some results that are pretty awesome. They make more money, keep their employees longer, and get more stuff done. Motivation is like the fuel that gets things moving, both for you and your team. As a leader, your job is to be the spark that ignites action. Instead of just chasing after rewards like money, great leaders focus on reaching big goals for their organization. They are the ones who set clear targets, take the lead, and keep pushing forward even when things get tough. When you show positivity and determination, it wrap off on your team. Your energy and drive inspire them to do their best. And when everyone is pumped up and ready to go, amazing things can happen. A study by global consulting firm Development Dimensions International 
reveals that leaders who excel in social skills perform 40% better in coaching, planning, and decision making. Leaders with strong social skills know that success isn't a solo journey. It's all about collaboration, effective communication, and sharing a common goal. Moving on, let's take a look at four things you can try to develop your emotional intelligence. Number one, try journaling. As you wrap up your workday, take a moment to reflect on how things went. Jot down your thoughts about meetings, projects, and interactions. What went well and what didn't. Think about your employees' feelings too. Did you notice any sign of frustration or joy? Paying attention to these details can help you understand your team better. 2. Undergo a 360-degree assessment In a 360-degree assessment, you gather feedback from your managers, colleagues, and peers while also evaluating yourself. It's like getting a panoramic view of your performance. This process reveals valuable insights into your strengths, your weaknesses, and blind spots things you might not see on your own. Jack Sanger, CEO of Sanger Folkman, says over 85% of Fortune 500 companies use this feedback. You must be thinking, why? Because it boosts self-awareness, making you more effective at work, less stress, and better building relationships. 3. Practice active listening. According to Psychology Today, only about 10% of people listen effectively. With distractions, like technology and background noise, it's easy to drift off. But as a leader, being a good listener is key for emotional intelligence and effective communication. To boost your emotional intelligence, practice active listening. Focus on the speaker. Show you are engaged by paraphrasing and use nonverbal cues like nodding. Active listening at work helps you connect with others and truly grasp their thoughts and feelings. To understand others' emotions, start by understanding your own. When you feel a strong emotion, positive or negative, pause and reflect. Consider why you feel this way and what triggers it. This practice boosts self-awareness and helps you empathize with colleagues. As an empathetic leader, you will foster a high-performance team. The video you should watch next is this one. It's all about how to improve your communication skills. Thanks for watching and see you next week.